Hey guys, we are back with the finals and yes, this is what it all came down to. We have Gustavo Wada who came here for his vacation, came here to Sunny Khan. It's a nice a little vacation, right? I guess he had a great time because he <laughs> made it all the way into the finals and he's facing off against Alessandro Kermascoli. Ooh, I know you <laughs> in the chat were rooting for him. Actually, guys, this is a great opportunity to see an interesting matchup because this is Mill. And on the other side, we have someone who has managed to beat Mill, even though the Mill player claimed to have a good matchup yeah. against him. So this will certainly be interesting. And yeah, we, are, we will start very shortly, actually. And oh, yeah, we see here the hashtag, so we're already starting the match. So we're going over to the game, and we will be seeing Alessandro going first. Now, I've talked, we've talked yesterday to Alessandro yeah. and asked him about the matchup, right? Because Pikachu Zekrom. At least I claimed it was one of the reasons that Mill stuff with stall stopped to being stopped being popular, right? It used to be quite popular last format, yeah. like especially in Offenbach. Oh <laughs> yeah, had we had a great time with Steelix Waylord. Did we? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course we saw Sylveon win the whole tournament. However, after Pika after the tech teams got released, people were like, oh, Pikachu Zekrom, it can accelerate so many energies. There's the Zebra Aura GX, meaning you have free retreat. It also has the GX attack that brings five energies back with so much energy acceleration. There's the Tapu Koko Prism that brings back additional energies. Just so much energy, free retreat. It, he has non GX attackers that can take out those Hoopers. So there's so much stuff yeah. looking again, working against this stall strategies. And of course, there's also the big threat of the Malama deck, which is able to recover energies all the time. However, Alessandro said, "No, no, no! I have a pretty good matchup against Pikachu Zekrom because I have Hooper." <laughs> so and it's like, yeah, that's what we're seeing here. Exactly. Alessandro already having down two Hooper on his first turn, being ready to to stop Gustavo's Pikachu Zekrom from doing much. And yes, that means Gustavo will have to attack with a Zapdos to take the knockout on both. And yeah, let's maybe have a quick look at their prices before we talk about their setup. Um, uh, Gustavo has nothing too relevant priced, but... Yes, it's one Pika to Zekrom, but he has another one, so it's all fine. But um. on the other side... We see an Alessandro prizes two Lusamine. That's unfortunate. And this is very sad yeah. for him because this deck is built on recy on using Lusamine and cycling through his supporters. Um, let's have a look at his list to figure out how many Lusamine he's playing because. Um, um, I think uh, it's. No, that's Plumeria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Samine, okay. He's playing three Lusamine, so he has still one available. And I'm not sure if he's playing Gladion. This decks typically do. And Iridio, that might be it. That might be Gladion. So um, it's quite possible that he will still have access to those loose. I mean, and they are, of course, later in the game, only important. However, going back to the mantra. So, yeah. Those loose, I mean, are of course key. But Alessandro will probably have access to them. And he still has loose, I mean, left in the stack. Yeah, I mean, and we can also see the order of the price card. So. One of the first, if he's going to take a prize card, <laughs> I very it much will be Luzerman. <laughs> I very much doubt this happening. <laughs> this deck's not... I mean, he has energies, he can attack, but this deck's not meant to do it. And we see Alessandro starting what a mill deck usually does. He plays the Stevens Resolve, searching his deck, yes, going exactly. for a few cards. He's just setting up his board. He wants Regigigas down, he wants Hoopas down. Not too many Regigigas, because otherwise Gustavo would be able to take easy prizes yep. on both. And he wants to set up his hand. However, every Steven advice plays also helps Gustavo because Gustavo is playing um, the Marsh Shadow, which we've seen in all of his previous games. Yep. And yeah, the thing that's, that matters most here are the Electro Powers of Gustavo. We see one in his prizes, meaning he still has three at his disposal. And Alessandro claimed that this matchup is good because once the Electro Powers are gone, the Hoopas are almost invincible, he said. They just sit there, the Zapdos can't one-shot them, he's able to heal them, he's able to remove energies until Gustavo's deck is out of them and can't attack anymore. And he, he claimed that it's extremely hard for Pikachu Zekrom to go through a total amount of 6 Hooper. However, he might get an easy, Gustavo might get an easy knockout here first. Yeah, that could very much be possible. I mean, uh, that's what Zapdos usually does. 
Girafari that is not the bulkiest Pokemon we have. Exactly. Definitely not. Only 19 HP. Uh, so that seems manageable for a Zapdos. And yes, I. Uh, yeah, because Alessandro so far has only used Steven's advice, he was not able to attack, so he wasn't able to use any, to get any use out of Girafaric, which, uh, which is used to remove um, important cards from play, so like important energies, like double colors yeah. energies against Zirak decks, with, like to recycle them with Oranguru, you can just remove them, put them into the Lost Zone, make sure they are never to return, and however, Alessandro not having any, not seeing anything important in Gustavus discard pile, opting to not use it. However, now he has the Skullgrunt hitting one energy, so he, <coughs> so he might be able to um, remove. To yeah, he will be able <laughs> to remove it and put it into the lost zone. Those energies being in the lost zone is quite a convenient place for Alessandro because there's already the Tapu Koko Prism Star, which could, ret which could return them yeah. for Gustavo and yeah. And Here I think that's what we're seeing right now. He just exactly. put uh, one basic energy into the low zone and a Jirachi. Yeah, he was debating what to put in there. Figured that, yeah, Jirachi might get relevant. Maybe at this later point in time, Gustavo will have a low deck and wants to use something like Rescue Stretcher to recover a few cards, have more yeah. cards in the stack. So opting to remove this Jirachi and because there are simply no other valuable cards. And we saw an escape row followed by a Guzma. Guzmaing up that Girafaric. So, yes. And, uh, Gustavo yeah. making sure that won't happen again. Targeting Thomas Girafaric. At least not not right now. <laughs> and yeah, and Alessandro setting up his rich Gigas Aurora. Also, the Mars Shadow, as I mentioned earlier, might come in huge. Here we see oh, yeah. Alessandro's only Lusamine picking up two new supporters. But yeah, so getting the Stevens advice, for example, back helps in his consistency. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my Italian is not the best, but I don't <laughs> see any draw cards in um, Alessandro's deck. Builds analysis is... Um, yeah, I mean, this deck is built around having the Lusamin loop. Uh, you yeah. have one Lusamin in your discard pile, one in your hand, exactly. and you can loop them. Exactly, losing something limitless. like... Limitless. Okay, lo lo using something like the Mar Shadow or Judge is, however, um, is, however a very like not very popular strategy but it's one of the strategies yeah. at your disposal if you want to target down control decks like the store control decks like the one Alessandro is using because they don't play a lot of draw supporters and it might not seem like it but these decks tend to break as well so if you put them at a low count amount of cards they are not too likely to draw one of the Steam's advice actually pretty likely to not draw any yeah, and yeah, he also plays Builds Analysis, which is kind of similar to Steven's advice. It looks at the top seven cards and then lets you pick two trainers out of there. So yeah, it's has a similar effect. Alessandro stack is all about using his trainers, getting the most out of them to disrupt your opponent. So <coughs> he has those and Steven's advice, but it's like the only consistency supporters in his deck. So if Gustav was able to set up a decent board, which allows him to attack consistently, like he currently has, he might want some more <coughs> energies. <coughs> some more energies, exactly. In his bot to not get disrupted easily. <coughs> but yeah, um, two energy are already enough, so he might want to consider using a Marshadow soon because Alessandro has used a lot of his team's advice. So maybe putting him at a bad hand. I mean, the, the sooner you use the Marshadow, the higher is the probability of Alessandro not really drawing the things he might need. We see another Stevens resolve. Yeah, however, Gustavo's hand, as we've uh, seen after the school run, was not the greatest. So he yeah. doesn't have that many options. No real draw supporters. And so he's forced to work with what he got and just attack consistently. And meanwhile, this Shrine of Punishment of Alessandro is putting in work. Because oh, yes. this Zara Aura already is at 80 damage from it. Um, Gustavo not being able to replace it. And two prizes for Alessandro would mean that he would get one of his loot, I mean, out of the prizes, very likely. Yep. And get a few more relevant cards. And yes. So, this, those prizes on the Zara Aura are pretty relevant. On the one side, um, 
Alessandro will get his clues. I mean, he will get prizes. Probably not gonna win through prizes, but it's possible. Yeah, I but mean, uh, usually those mill decks don't really win on prizes. Yeah, the most important aspect of this, however, that the ability of the Zero Hour would be gone. And we've seen Gustavo using it every turn to his full advantage. That's what it's for, right? Yeah, he uses this to f have retreat on his Pokemon, attack with his Zapdos consistently, and it's extremely useful in these mill matchups. Because the other Zapdos decks, the straight one without Zero Aura, we've seen Robin Schultz facing Alessandro. <laughs> yes. And yes. No chance. Exactly. Almost. This is, this is mainly due to his energies, but it's also because it's so hard to attack consistently with Zapdos if you're not taking knockouts. So if you have to attack multiple times, especially like against the Regigigas where you have to attack four times. Oh yes, it's and bulky. And here we see Alessandro's Iridio. <laughs> also known as Gladion. To look at his prizes, probably gonna get a Lusamine yeah. out of it. Um, just to have access to this Lusamine chain. Meanwhile, the Zara Aura is at 100 damage already. And yep, one of yeah. the Lusamines is gone naturally what he has taken now he's able to have access to infinite resources by using lusamine to recover lusamine and another supporter or a stadium and to keep using lusamine yeah alessandro is now in the loop <laughs> and yeah gustavo still not having the greatest options but he's able to attack consistently <laughs> it seems that he doesn't like to go for um for GX too much, also his hand probably still not too great, he hasn't used, he I mean, hardly did anything lately. It could also be that he's just on the point where he's like, you know, I do have this opportunity to play Mar Shadow, use that loose to shuffle my hand back into the deck once during this round. Yeah, exactly. Alessandro is probably not going to KO the Marshadow to give him the option to bring it back into the game. <laughs> so he might just draw a card, attack, and wait until he he used enough decks and resources so he can put the best use out. However, he can get the best use out I'm of his pretty sure, use. I'm pretty sure Gustavo would like to replace with Trans Punishment and get access to his um, Marshadow rather sooner than later because this damage on the Zaraora is really starting to get a pro to become a problem and Alessandro might actually be able to take to take the series by prizes in the late game. <laughs> because I mean that would be an interesting uh, turn of events. I would certainly expect something like um, Tapu Koko, GX or Pikachu Zekrom to hit the field just to put on pressure on the, against the Switch Gigas. Maybe maybe later on, maybe soon. So he can take knockouts on those. And that would mean more Pokemon that get damaged by the Shrine of Punishment. Also, we see Gustavo accelerating energies to all sorts of Pokemon, meaning that he he seems to be hinting at the Tapu Koko GX coming into play, moving these energies onto it. Also, of How many energies does he need to one hit KO the Regigigas? What do you mean he needs? Uh, so he needs three energies to yeah. attack, of course, with Tapu Koko. Yeah. There are no energies on Alessandro's board, so he won't use the GX attack, but he can attack for 130, so... And um, Regigigas has... Regigigas has 180, <laughs> and he has the Ancient Crystal, which, which reduces the damage done to it by 30. Okay, yeah, I see. That's why Gustavo is dealing 50 here. And yeah, he's setting up the Voltage Gigas for a knockout with something like a Tapu Koko. Maybe looking for a knockout. Um, probably not looking for the four shot with the Zapdos here. Actually, a three shot if he uses one Electro Power, so probably something to keep in mind. And yeah, Gustavo just keeps attacking. See him use a Lily here. Yeah. Sarah Ova is already at 150, so in two turns it will be knocked out. That's a lot. Only which, by this. Which stadium is he actually playing? I, for sure, um, at least one Ether Paradise. He's and playing Ether Paradise and. Um, and Founder Mountain, of course. But yes. what's the Ether Paradise count? One. One. He's playing okay. one Ether Paradise, so he, one Founder Mountain. So he only has two stadiums. Now he's going for the Marshadow and he's using Let Loose. Figuring that he needs to start disrupting Alessandro. He can't have Alessan he can't let Alessandro have his way. He can't let him do whatever he wants. Yeah. 
So he's using let loose, pulling the trigger, making Alessandro draw only four cards and hoping that he will not draw well out of this. Yeah, Gustavo really needs to pick up the pace in this matchup. Start taking uh, knockouts, taking prices, putting some pressure on Alessandro, disrupting his strategy. Yeah, I mean, they have 60 minutes. Gustavo basically needs to win one game only in these 60 minutes because the timeout situation is, of course, always a terrible thing for these stall decks. Yes. They can't, they don't really, they have options to take prizes, but they are certainly not good ones. So if it comes to a timeout situation, Gustavo can easily win by um, prize advantage. So, so we see another Thunderous Assault. And um, now, oh, there's the Acerola. Yeah, there's an Acerola from Alessandro being able to still keep up, um, to still keep his Red Gigas healthy. However, no Steven's Resolve, no builds, and yeah, no, no yeah, Steven's Resolve. No build and analysis. Ah, complicated names, guys. <laughs> really, really complicated. We'll figure that out too. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? The consistency supporters. It's just, <laughs> it's just a utility supporter, not a consistency one. <clears throat> so, Alessandro only has four cards in his hand currently. However, if the Zero Hour gets knocked out, that means that Alessandro is getting access to more cards, so Gustavo would very much like to replace the stadium. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, uh, his deck doesn't look very uh, and huge here, anymore. And here so. he's opting to attack with the Tapu Koko Prism Star, putting three energies on it, attacking for 120 is minus 30 because of the Ancient Crystal, so it's quite a solid attacker, being able to two-shot those Rage Gigas even though they have Ancient Crystal. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, important. Also, Tapu Koko Prison Star only being a one prize card attacker, probably and not that relevant because Alessandro is not going to win on prices. But Alessandro still. playing a Cynthia, being able to refresh his hand, so he drew a consistency supporter. And this Zara Aura will be knocked out after Alessandro passes his turn. Yeah. So those, this free retreat will be gone. Yeah. But I think both players know yeah. that. Yeah, also, um, uh, um, Gustavo played a... F I think he played a Faulkner last turn to pick up a Rescue Stretch. I wasn't super Yeah, attentive yeah he did it. that. But yeah, so he has the Rescue Stretch already. Bring the Zora Aura back once it gets knocked out, if he needs it. Probably won't put it into play immediately because, well, it will get damage from Final Punishment again. <laughs> and I mean, those six prizes for Alessandro are very much within reach. With uh, Zora Aura being almost knocked out, Tapulela being at 50 damage, I believe, or maybe even more. And yeah, Alessandro using a counter catcher to bring up the Marshadow to stall a bit. Yeah, and uh, down goes the Zara Aura. And, and um, also important to note that Tapulele starts getting shrine damage as well. It already has 60 damage on it. Yes. That's quite something. I mean, we just saw how this shrine damage can add up over time. Gustavo thinking about if he should manually retreat or if he should bring him at Zara back. But yes, he attaches an energy, retreats manually, and he's taking his his second knockout of the series actually. The Tapu Coco Prism Star is actually something that Alessandro hasn't mentioned in his interview, even though it's quite a big card here because it can take a one shot on those on those Hoopers. So yeah, and I can hardly imagine that Gustavo is the only one approaching the matchup with this strategy yes. so if he still believes the matchup is good he might have a way to work around it uh, yeah so certainly i mean they have played this matchup before both of these players certainly know what they're doing and here we see alessandro steams and vice with a marshadow gone result as the <laughs> result <laughs> with a marshadow already being used Gustavo will have no way to disrupt Alessandro's hand anymore, meaning that from now on Alessandro will have access to whichever cards he wants. Yeah. And he will put play so lock on Gustavo. And he will play them again and again and again. Gustavo has only taken two prizes yet, so this might turn this might become hard for him in the later game. However, he has a solid board. 
he has a lot of energies in play. He still has the option of Zara bringing Zara back and using the GX attack. He still has the option of um, using Tapu Koko GX to have another attacker using those energies from the Zapdos and the Tapu Lele. Yeah, still I mean, those Zapdos decks are quite flexible. And he has plenty of switching options left to keep attacking. Yeah. I mean, those, those Zapdos decks are built to be flexible. So they are built to um, attack with different Pokémon, to approach different situations. Um, they are quick, so... Yeah, sometimes even a Tapu Koko, which is usually just a means of accelerating energies, can be a very useful attacker. And yeah, Alessandro took some time on his Steven's advice. Resolve. Made sure and <laughs> resolve. <laughs> Let's, let's just call it Steven. Okay. Yeah, On his Steven. Steven, make sure to look for his deck, plan his future turns accordingly, make sure to pick the right cards. And, and, and there's a Guzma. Was seid? Guzming up a Hooper, deciding to send up a Tapulele with a skateboard, retreating it and taking a knockout on one of those Hoopers. Yeah, I mean, Gustavo needs to start taking prices, and if he can take the easier ones, of yeah, course, exactly. that's better. Both Hooper, even for Alessandro claim they were his main strategy, seem to be rather easy prizes for Gustavo here. Yeah, and maybe yeah, he right did now, not really right now the Hooper, <laughs> Right now, the Hooper's taking inspiration from the Jirachi, <laughs> taking a quick nap here, even though it should not be asleep. Just <laughs> Alessandro just preparing it to get knocked out and Gustavo's <laughs> like, hold on, hold up a minute, I still have stuff to do here. <laughs> I'm not ready yet, give me a moment. And there bringing, we see. Yeah, we just bring the Zara Aura back, attaching an energy to it, preparing it. Um, one of his strongest attackers, it's not, not only does it have a great ability, it has also deals 160 damage, so it can take out those Regigigas rather easily. Yeah, I, I can't really see how this is a good matchup for Alessandro, if I'm being honest. Yeah, the general prediction seems to be right, but this Pikachu Zekrom deck is really hard to handle for Alessandro. However, he uses a counter catcher, brings that Marshadow up again, tries to stall that way. And the yeah. Shrine of Punishment, meanwhile, putting on more and more damage. The Tapulele already at, I don't know, 80, maybe more. Also already half knocked out. Second die is not clearly visible, but it will probably be knocked out somewhere along the line. Yeah, Gustavo is uh, playing two escape boards. One is attached to the Tapulele GX. The other one is... Uh, not attached yet, or is it on the um, Tapu Koko yeah, Prism Star? I think it's star. on the Tapu Koko Prism okay. Star. So he can't attach it to Marshadow, yeah, unfortunately. Well. Another Lightning Energy, however, would mean that the Marshadow can be retreated using Zarawa's ability. So all of Gustavo's Pokémon would have free retreat at that point. And Alessandro just bring up that Marshadow using a Steven. And an interesting thing here is that Alessandro has hardly been disrupting any energies from yes. Gustavo. They all still there. Yes, he's been valuing to have this heal like Acerola. He's been valuing Steven to prepare his hand. However, he didn't have the time to use supporters to disrupt the energies of Gustavo. So Gustavo's ball full of energies. And yeah, he's also powering up a second attacker. So it's all looking pretty good for Gustavo right now. He still has an easy price on the Hoopa. Yes, he does. And he has all of his Electro Powers still in his deck, so... Oh, I think um, the next price he's going to take is actually Electro Power. So yeah, if he manages to yeah. charge up with Zara Aura... 6, 7, 8, so he still has three more energies. Oh, he plays the Energy Switch! And an Energy Switch to conserve an energy. That was smart. <coughs> Gustavo playing 11 energies, having 7 on board and 1 in the lost zone, meaning he has 3 still left at his disposal, so he can charge up the Zara Aura. He also has the Thunder Mountain. So, and he's putting on pressure, he's keeping these attacks coming. Alessandro already used a couple max potions, doesn't play Crushing Hammer. Only it, it looks like Alessandro's stream curse is coming back. Yeah, it's not really a stream curse because that implies like 
bad variants, right? I mean, it just looks like his deck's simply slacking the options to combat this Fruit Treat Zara Aura, this Tapu Koko's 120 attack. Yeah, and I mean, Gustavo is indeed playing a rather unusual build of the Zekrom deck. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, he is playing a, an unusual build having the Jolt here and the Pikachu, having stuff like Ace of and e from Paradise, Paradise and stuff like this. However, with what is defining this game are cards like Tapu Koko, Prism, Zara Aura GX, which are quite common cards actually. The Mark Shadow being relevant in this matchup as yeah. well. However, it was not the deciding factor here. It did disrupt Alessandro for a bit, but what but what's most important is that Gustavo's just managing to set up a board where he can attack consistently, can target, can damp, put pressure onto those Reggie Gigas. And yeah, it's really working out for him. Alessandro, again, not disrupting any energies, just using a max potion. And Gustavo can attack right away, yeah. dealing 90 damage again. Speaking of energy disruption, I mean, looking at Alessandro's Darkless, what are even his options to remove well, basic energies? He plays with two Plumeria. Yes. So those are his main way of disrupting energies. And as we've seen in his earlier game against Robin, he opts to go for that quite late. However, he also has Volugia, so I'm wondering if he's gonna lose it, if he's gonna use it anytime soon. He could put the Tapu Koko Prism Star into the Lost Zone. However, Volugia GX is a GX. And it, ha it has the drawback of giving up two prizes and it has the lightning weakness. So at this point... Yeah, at this point it would already be a lo loss. No, if not. He the Zach just doesn't yeah. hit for weakness. And the Zero Hour is not powered up yet. The Tapu Koko Prism Star would be gone. So there wouldn't be many ways for um, Gustavo to power up the Zero Hour. Energy Switch was used already as well. So he yeah. would be forced to find his Thunder Mountain to get an attack going. So it's still a possibility for Alessandro. Usually he probably would have liked to see that earlier on to get rid of the Tapu Koko Prism Star right away because it's really by far the best attacker Gustavo has in this matchup. Yeah, it definitely is. It's putting in a lot of work. It's helping Gustavo getting, uh, yeah, handling this small deck. And um, exactly, like yeah, Gustavo does not seem to struggle at all. I mean, it's it almost does twice as much damage as that does, but what it really means is dealing 90 damage means that Gu Alessandro is consistently under pressure to heal off the damage from his Reggie yeah. Gigas. Because with the Zapdos, Alessandro can take time, he can use, take, get 50 damage, use Plumeria, get 50 damage, use Plumeria, get 50 damage, and then he, that's when he needs to heal. Yeah. And he's putting down a Durant. Yeah. With, <laughs> with an energy, double think, colorless yeah, energy. Double colorless energy. I believe. Pro, yeah, I mean, Alessandro is a. Uh, it's definitely no metal energy, so it must be double colorless energy. And, yeah, and there's the Osarola. And yeah, the Durand used to mill your opponent's deck. It can discard the top two cards of Gustavo's deck. So, probably, maybe hoping to hit something like a Thunder Mountain, hit some energies. Seems like a desperate situation. Oh, it was an electro power. And he's reminding Gustavo of a shine of punishment. The Tapu Lele almost knocked out. It will be knocked out after this turn. This will mean that Alessandro will get ahead in prices. And <laughs> this also means that he won't be able to use Lugia anymore. And yeah, Gustavo however, uh, Gustavo however taking a prize, so they are even on prizes. Oh, yes. And if Gustavo has an option today <laughs> to to get a Guzma and get some attacker going, he might take a knockout on the Zara Aura to finish this game by prices. Yeah, and also the the Shrine of Punishment is now really putting pressure on Gustavo. The the clock that is ticking is now not the cards that he still has in his deck or the resources that he still has. It is the Shrine of Punishment damage on his Zara Aura GX. Yes, exactly. So this seems to be his strategy. He doesn't even bother to disrupt energies. He's just making it hard for Gustavo to take prizes. And meanwhile, knowing that the Zero Hour has to be in play consistently, so he's just putting up those Reggie Gigas, healing them as often as possible, waiting for the Shrine of Punishment to chip away. 
at Vozera Aura until it is knocked out. And we see uh, Bill's analysis. Yes, looking at top seven cards and picking two trainers out of it. So what could that be? I don't know, probably something disruptive, I'd guess. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah, it's, uh, I guess those are the most common cards in the Oh, we um, see Exa Rollers to get some damage And the Team Skullgrunt. Yeah, so this team that seems reasonable. Team Skullgrunt might come in handy, however, Gustavo has not attached energies lately, so he might not have any, because otherwise he might want to power up the Zero Aura. I mean, looking at his board, there are a lot of energies on it. Yes, he still has some left in his deck, but if he had them in hand, he might want to power up the Zero Aura, so he can use double electro power yeah. to get a knockout on one of those Reggie Gigas and then use a Guzma to take the last prize on the something like the Hoop. And uh, we're seeing an ultra rare. GX yeah, it's a Pikachu Zekrom. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> He's putting an energy onto it, threatening the GX attack of it next turn to take a knockout on the Regigigas combined with an Electro Power. Going down to one price thanks to Guzma. And now Alessandro has a hard time winning this game. Some hand disruption would certainly be nice for him right now. Oh, yes, definitely. But. Um, Otherwise, it is likely that Gustavo will just have an energy. Have we found a mountain? Retreat his Tapu Koko into Zekrom, play a, an Electro Power, and take a knockout with a GX attack to knock out Reggie Gigas. Yeah, we know he has the Electro Power, he's taken it from his prize cards. Um, he yeah, almost that's, that's certainly has an energy card. That's what Alessandro's so. checking for. How many Electro Powers do you have left? Will I l Am I on the clock to lose next turn? How many resources are gone? And yeah, I think there's two electro powers in Gustavo's discard pile. Yes. So still plenty to take the knockout here. What's really important is for Thunder Mountain because energy switch. Okay, well he can use Tapu Koko's ability as well, of course. Um, so um, he can just put it into the Lost Zone, accelerate an energy onto the um, second Pikachu, attach another one, play a play an Electro Power and take a knockout for the game. A few turns before Alessandro was able to um, take six prizes <laughs> thanks to Shrine's <laughs> Punishment. And we and see, see a Plumeria trying an approach to trying to slow down Gustavo, getting those crucial last few turns. However, next turn he won't be able to repeat this if there is a next turn. Because we'll we'll see. Because the Tapu Koko can attack for 90. And, and there goes the energy from the Pikachu Zekrom GX tag yeah. team. Probably not much else that Alessandro's do. Yeah, he's passing. And now it's on Gustavo. And we're seeing. We're seeing nothing. Uh, I have attached, I'm not sure if he attached an energy to I his think uh, he did not attach anything. He was. He's still considering. He looks very unsure what to yeah. do. And he's attaching and no. no. Oh he's playing an energy switch. Oh. oh he had some of those left, so he's switching energy switch. Yeah, he's playing two energy switches. Oh I thought it was a one-off because I've seen it so rarely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this type of Coco's ability only works on the bench. So he would have to retreat it and no, he's just attacking, putting 90 damage on Alessandro's. I mean, he Reggie still Gigas. has some time before that Shrine of Punishment damage chaos his... Um the energy switch, yeah, because be for the chaos for zero hour. The energy <laughs> switch <laughs> being you. an interesting play from Gustavo, because he can use it at any point. So removing the energy right now doesn't seem to do much. Yeah, it However, seems like he's forcing Alessandro to go for the Plumeria again. And yeah, Alessandro seemingly punishing this play with a, with a counter catch of his own. However, this means that the Tapu Koko Prism Star is now on the bench. So Gustavo can use its ability now to put an extra energy onto the Pikachu Zekrom. So all he needs now is an, uh, an switching option. A switching card, an, an energy, energy and an Electro Power to take the game. There's the Thunder oh, Mountain. That's basically an energy. So he needs a switching card and an Electro Power still. He's checking his discard pile, so I'd be guessing. Oh, okay, he's using the, the um, Tapu, Tapu Koko, Koko Prism Star, Star. <coughs> accelerating an energy to speaker to Zekrom, using Tapu Koko 
to switch into the active position, that's basically a switching card, Ast moves energies to it, now it has free retreat, retreats into the Pikachu Zekrom. And, and I'm sure we will see the Electro Power And there's here. Electro Power and, and that's Gustavo. game one. Star was able to use the GX attack for the game <coughs> in what turned out to be a really close series <laughs> in which Alessandro was able to go down to just two prize cards. I mean, who would have thought that it would actually get down to prices? I mean, that's what Alessandro was saying. He said, yeah, yeah I just stole it out. I have my hoopas. Turns out the Regikigas <laughs> is much, much, much more important than the Hoopa. Both Hoopas were actually liabilities for him because they were easy prizes for Gustavo. So, going into game two, of course, Gustavo is in a huge advantage. Yeah. He has won a game and it's only 25 minutes left for Alessandro to win the second game. Yeah, and, um, and I think. E <laughs> and even if he does, it would mean that they go to sudden death. Oh, yes. So. It looks very, very bad for Alessandro Camascoli. This game one victory for Gustavo probably means that he will be the special event Khan champion, but let's but not call it too early. Yeah, I was just about to say, don't jinx it. Yeah, perhaps <laughs> he's opening Tampulele. Alessandro puts down Shrine of Punishment. Gustavo breaks for multiple turns and the Tampulele gets I mean, knocked out. It's not like Gustavo is entirely unable to attack. Yeah, so, Alessandro, you mean, yeah. yeah. He has double colorless energies, he has mass energies. So he's not able to attack with Hoopa, but he can. He can atta attack with Regigigas. Yeah, if he gets three out of his four energies <laughs> into play, he can attack with Regigigas <laughs> for 160 damage. So, quite a strong attack. Might yeah. be able to power that up. I think we saw Gustavo having a great approach to the matchup, and uh, I think Alessandro is the one who yes. is now in a position to see what he can change. Where he made exact. the crucial mistakes. Yeah, but however, it might be too late to change things up because, as I mentioned, it's only 25 minutes and Alessandro needs to win two games, not just one. And the first game took 35 minutes already. Because in a timeout scenario, Gustavo will almost certainly be the winner. In Offenbach Regionals, we had a similar situation where, however, the stall disruptive deck Sylveon by Hampus Eriksson was able to take the series in time due to price advantage. However, it was a Sylveon deck, it had a pretty powerful attack, yep, and true. it was against a Vika Ray deck, so those Rayquaza GX were weak to the Sylveon. Yeah, but we'll see what's going to happen. It's the Pokemon TCG, and you'll never know. It all comes down to the cards you can actually work with. Yes. The thing I'm wondering about most is actually Alessandro used multiple Stevens early on, and, yeah. he, op and he didn't prepare, his, and he opted to not go for the Lugia GX. And with the Lugia GX and a counter gain, as soon as um, Gustavo would have taken a prize with the Tapu Koko Prism stuff. Alessandro could have been able to put down the Lugia, put down a DCE, a counter gain, use Acerola to bring it into the active position and, and send that Tapu Koko Prism Star into the Lost Zone to get rid of it. Maybe he was just not expecting it to be such a big threat. I mean, he has played this matchup before. There must be another. I mean, Gustavo has waited to use the Tapu Koko Prism Star for quite a while. Yeah. So. He was attacking himself just early on, then using the Machado before switching over to the Coco Prism style. So maybe Alessandro just didn't have the resources or felt that he was too much behind. Yeah, that could be. Because using that Lugia GX, of course, means that he is most likely giving up two easy prizes. And he, pro he might have figured that it was just too late to use the Lugia GX had he given up that two additional prizes. Gustavo might have been able to just close out the game without the Coco Prism style. Okay, so we see um, Gustavo's first turn. He used Girachi's Stella Wish, went for a turn one Lily, which is yes. the supporter you want in your first turn if you're playing a Zapdos deck. He had to use a Tapu Lele, which is usually not great. Especially not in uh, this very matchup. Yeah, I mean, usually it's pretty bad because in the price trade you can get punished severely by having such a frail GX on your board. In this matchup, it doesn't matter too much because Alessandro won't be able to take a knockout easily. However, we've seen the Shrine of Punishment being a very important threat. Yeah. So being able to pick up another. So if Alessandro might be able to draw into it soon, yeah. <coughs> 
he might be able to um, get a knockout on this Tapolele and Zarawa quite quickly. Yeah, and I think what we saw was just Alessandro benching yes. Ehuqua and passing. And it's yes, Gustavo's turn so. again, so it doesn't look great for Alessandro. At all. <laughs> no. Yes, Alessandro this time couldn't find any of his Steven, couldn't find a Cynthia, couldn't find a Bill. No way, no way access to his consistency cards, having to work with only what he got in his hand and no means of getting more cards. Yeah, and... Um, Meanwhile, yeah, Gustavo's powering up his Zara Aura, already has three energies on play. He has three trees on the Jirachi, just needs to wake up and he will be ready to attack. Um, also, Alessandro, did he just draw a card and pass right away? I think so, yes. I think that's how, what, what's so happening it's, currently. So it's on Gustavo again. And there's the third energy on the Zara, Zara Aura GX. <laughs> it's now powered up with an Electro Power. It would be ready to take a knockout here. And that's what we're going to see. But he's just attacking, dealing 160 damage, being 20 short of a knockout. And let's see which cards Alessandro got. He doesn't seem to have a Plumeria, otherwise he probably would have used it already. But chances are that he has a healing card. Yeah, there's yeah. a Max Potion. I think he's playing four he of them. He probably plays four, Yeah, yes. he's playing four. Um, he probably also uh, plays... Yeah, he plays four Max Potion, yeah. four, four Acerola, Acerola uh, so three Luz Amin to recycle both. So he's certainly valuing this healing approach and Shrine of Punishment as a means of putting damage onto your opponent's field. Yeah, but w w Gustavo saw that Alessandro does not really have a lot to work with, so not KOing that Regigigas might have been a way to find out if Alessandro at least has some healing cards. So, yeah. Yeah, putting pressure on with Regigigas is of course huge. Alessandro not having a great hand, not having any Steven, not having any and consistency. We see the and potion. those max potions are actually huge. Usually he prefers to use those Acer Rollers if he doesn't do anything else. Max potion is a card that allows him to use something like a Lusamine, use yeah. something like a Plumeria in the same turn to gain speed advantage. If he's not doing anything, he would much rather use those Acer Rollers. And like this, he can't do much. He finally draws into uh. a Steven. But there's only 20 minutes left on the clock. Gustavo's field is looking pretty good. With oh, yes. Reggie Gigas is damaged and will be knocked out because Steven ends his turn. So he will be able to retreat with Zarara into the Zapdos, take his first prize with all those energies already on his board. Yeah, and uh, Lissandra is probably going for some uh, Shrine of Punishment, Lusamin, healing options. Yeah, he also thought almost certainly he will go for another Steven and he might want some more Reggie Gigas because this one is going down and... Uh, oh, and uh, I think that's an Ultra Ball. Yeah. And I wonder if he's going for a Mouse Shadow now. The Mouse Shadow however, is in his prizes. Oh, I'm I was sorry, just yes. about. <laughs> I was just about to point out of that course it good is. news for Alessandro is that after the Steven, he will be keeping his hand. Gustavo will not have the option to disrupt him. And Alessandro is now back in this game. However, he's back, might be back in the game, but it's probably too late to come back in this finals because Gustav was running away with this game once again. He's sending up the Jirachi. He's doing quite <laughs> a good setup. Not being disrupted very much. Getting an Electro Power with the Jirachi. Interestingly, he goes for the Jirachi. Probably has a switching card in his hand. Yeah, I mean, otherwise he wouldn't have done that. That's his chance to KO that Regigigas. So he must be going for it. Yeah, and there we see a switch. Zapdos gets at into the active position, takes the knockout for first prize for Gustavo. And we have Hooper in the active position. Now an interesting thing that might happen actually is Alessandro going for Luiga GX, DCE, counter gain, Guzma onto the Zara Aura, but no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean he can still do it next turn. Putting that Zara Aura into the lost zone would certainly mean a lot because this free retreat ability is really at the center of this matchup. The flexibility it provides is just so important for Gustavo to get the right attacker at the right time, to just keep attacking and yeah. I'm also to not very, get stuck. I'm also very surprised to see that Alessandro decided not to go for a Shrine of Punishment with his last Steven. 
there yeah. are already two GX cards on Gustavo's bench. So, uh, and we saw that kind of punishment yeah. doing a lot for Alessandro in he the might, last match. He might be valuing those cards to prepare his um, to prepare the Luca GX turn. Maybe he's valuing his setup more, so he um, chose to get some setup cards instead. Here we see five cards <laughs> Gustavo can't take with a Girachi. Uh, I think he, that's the first time we saw that happen. I'm pretty sure we did because those decks uh. play a ridiculous amount of trainer cards. They only play like 10 energies usually, a few Pokemon and like 30 plus um, trainer cards. So usually those Girachi have at least one of a or a few cards to pick from. And we see the second Regigigas going down. Yes. Um, Gustavo using an escape board to retreat for Girachi, using that electro power he got last turn from the Stellar Wish, and taking a knock on this Regigigas, keeping up the pressure, making sure that Alessandro has to use those um, Stevens to get more Pokemon into play, and making sure that he can't afford to get something f more threatening. Out. And what we're seeing now is Alessandro playing a rescue stretcher, and that's really rescuing him because he can't leave this lonely Hoopa alone here. Yeah, certainly not. And he uses a Lusamine for two Steven, so it's very slow. He can't really seem to stabilize in this early game. But meanwhile, Gustavo playing a Guzman for Regigigas, using the Stellar Wish. If he can get an Electro Power, he might get, he will get an offer here. However, it does not seem like a Stellar Wish gets him one. He only takes a switch. Uh, but so far we're seeing a great game played by Gustavo here. Yeah, he's putting, he's just putting up so much pressure. He would probably attack with the Zapdos here, might opt to attack with the Zeraora, however, just to put on more damage. Actually, oh, he has an Electro Power and he takes another knockout. That's so he's huge! he's up three prizes and the most important thing is that Alessandro just can't stabilize at all. He's, he's reliant on getting those Strategy Gigas out, getting Ancient Crystals on them, making sure that his board is safe, that he can get out whatever else he wants, the Shrine of Punishment, the Supporters, the Lusamine Loop. Alessandro is just so busy with and surviving oh, and oh my god, we see Steven. Steven's resolve that ends his turn and the and question is now is, Wada. is Gustavo able to KO this Hooper? Yes. He has two energy switch in his deck, he has the Thunder Mountain, he only needs an energy and a way to accelerate enough energy and he would be able to take a knockout on the super alternative. So what he needs now is energy and energy switch. Or Thunder Mountain, exactly. On, um, alternatively he could use there's the two energy. electro power and, and the, there's the energy switch, switch and this and will be this the game. Is game. And Gustavo Wilder taking this finals 2-0 over Alessandro Kramaskoli throwing in an impressive way why Mild why Stardex have become so unpopular. <laughs> showing how to properly approach this matchup, how to beat Stalk players. And I hope you guys took notes. I hope you guys <laughs> make sure to beat those Stall decks in the future so I don't have to face them in tournament. I hope everyone will be ready to take them down. And yeah. It was in my opinion quite the exciting but finals. Still, big shout out to Alessandro showing yes. us that Stall decks are still a viable yes, option. They are not as bad <laughs> as everybody thinks. He certainly made it interesting. He almost managed to take game one. Unfortunately, Gustavo just played too well, got the right out. Yeah. He managed this game so well, not leaving any space for Alessandro to take it back on him. And winning in 35 minutes already was the winning sentence for Gustavo, meaning that Alessandro hardly could come back into this, into this uh, best of three. And yeah, Gustavo just yeah. got a quick game two and won it two are very impressive. So ladies and gentlemen, I am Villa VGC, this is Limitless <laughs> Philip. We had a great time and congratulations to our winner Gustavo Bada from Brazil winning the Cannes Special Championships 2019.